As some of you will know, I've recently just done a review of the MT-09 SP, which I absolutely loved. And loads of people in the comments have said, Chopsy, you've got to try the XSR 900. So here we are. This is a new XSR 900. And you're thinking, hang on a minute. There's something a bit different about that. That's not quite what I've seen on the Yamaha website when I look at their retro range. And you'll be absolutely right. Because this is the Velocity Moto RD500 body kit for the XSR. And doesn't it look absolutely fantastic? This bodywork is also sort of Yamaha approved. You can buy this bike completely assembled from certain Yamaha dealers within the UK. So this isn't this is like an approved Yamaha add-on if you like to your XSR. It won't mess up your warranty and all of that sort of stuff. So if you want to know a little bit more about the XSR 900, I'll let you know how I think it compares to the MT9 SP I recently rode. Link to the video at the top somewhere, and I'll talk to you a bit more about this brilliant Velocity Moto body kit. So if that sounds of interest. Go and grab yourself a cup of tea and chop C. Roll the intro. I've always wanted an RD500. It's one of my dream bikes. You know, I, I rode bikes in the 90s. I watched Swans and Rainey on the TV. You know, I really wanted a four-stroke 500 two-stroke, but these days RD500s are about 20 grand for a reasonably decent one. You know, and then of course you've got all the worries of running an 80s two-stroke on the road. You know, the costs involved if things go wrong and, you know, finding part, it's just, it's out of the question now. I'm, I'm not willing to, to spend 20 grand on a bike like that. But this Velocity Moto kit it brings you all of the look of the RD500, or, or pretty damn close to it. You know, you don't have the little pipes sticking out the back, or the pipes at the side, but, you know, it's definitely got more than a, 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 a resemblance to an RD500. I think it looks really, really good. Now, we will do a little bit more of a more detailed walk around in a minute, but let's jump on it for now. I'm going to tell you a bit more about it. So jumping aboard, you're greeted with the same instrument display, which was on the MT-09 I rode the other day. Yeah, I guess it could be a little bit more retro, but never mind. You've got all the same information on there that I had on the MT-09. I've got the same switch gear. I've got the same features and functions. Absolutely identical to the MT-09 SP from a features and functions point of view. Even the cruise control is on the XSR. So you've got all of those bits and bobs from the MT-09. And look at that view. You know, you've got this beautiful fuel tank. The fuel tank is different to the SP, the M29 SP. That's much bigger, you know. This is more co more conventional looking fuel tank on this bike. You've still got the same bars. The riding position is slightly different. Very close, but slightly tweaked. Your feet are a little bit more forward. I think the bars are perhaps a little bit closer to you. On the XSR, you've actually got a two inch longer swinging arm. So the swinging arm is two inches longer on the XSR which should put a little bit more weight over the front. So maybe make it a little bit more conventional feeling to ride on the road. But has that sacrificed a bit of the fun factor? Let's go and find out. <laughs> One of the things I loved with the MT-09 was this CP3 motor. I mean, it's an absolute gem of a motor, this. It may not be winning on sort of the top trumps front, you know, it's, it's doing nothing extraordinary when you just look at the, the figures. I mean, it's 117 horsepower, 93 brake horsepower. It's not as powerful as the new Street Triple or the 890R, so you think, yeah, we discount the MT-09. But do not do that. This engine... The, the beauty of this engine is the power it creates right at the bottom of the rev range. You know, you, it's all it's there instantly from really low down on the rev range, and that just makes a really fun, engaging bike to ride on the road. So this motor is identical to what is in the MT-09. Same power, no changes, exactly the same, same gearing and everything. One of the main differences between the XSR 900 and the MT-09 is the fact that the swinging arm is about two inches longer on the XSR. 
So on the MT-09, it was it was a really flighty, exciting bike to ride. I know I absolutely love that machine because it would be lifting the. You could actually wheelie that bike so easy. It's like one of the easiest bikes ever to wheelie because of the you know, the real short wheelbase and the fact that you're sat sort of towards the back of the bike. The XSR. The first thing I'm noticing jumping on this is you've got a lot more weight over the front. So that was one of the slight criticisms with the MT-09. The front felt a little bit vague because there wasn't much weight over it. Well, the XSR with that longer swinging arm, it shifted sort of the center of gravity forward a little bit more. And there definitely is a bit more weight over the front. The problem with that is it has taken away a little bit of the excitement. Yeah, the MT-09 was fun because it was lifting the front and it was getting exciting. This is a little bit more conventional feeling. It still feels absolutely amazing. Yeah, don't get me wrong, but jumping off the MT-09 SP onto the XSR, it's a little bit more sedate. You know, it doesn't change direction quite as quickly. I mean, it is three kilos heavier. Not that you're going to notice that. It's, it's the length of the swinging arm, which is sort of settling the bike down a bit more, making it a little bit more stable. And that could work for a lot of people. For me, I'm sort of missing the excitement a little bit of the of the MT-09, but hey, it's still a fantastic machine. The other differences with the MT-09 compared to the XSR is the suspension on the MT-09 SP obviously has the Olin's rear shock. It has some sort of rather nice KYB forks in it. This this feels actually incredibly nice. The suspension on this bike, it's really plush. You know, the, the ride is nowhere near as, as jarring as what it is on the MT-09. It's definitely more sporty feeling, the MT-09, but it's really plush, this XSR. It doesn't feel like the suspension is a poorer quality, but it is a little bit more bouncy feeling. And when you really try and push on, it will sort of, it will object a little bit compared to the, the, the SP, which just sort of did as you commanded, you know. But, Again, it's it's more in tune with what the bike needs to be, but it still feels incredibly well suspended, but just not quite as sharp as the M209. The M209 is definitely a little bit of this the sharper bike out of the two. And what I do like with the XSR is the fuel tank is a bit more conventional. So you've got some sort of little, little ledges here on the edge. So if you if you can hang off the bike and lock your legs onto the tank, you can't do that with the MT-09, you know, you can't really get a good purchase with your thighs on the tank to hang off it. Certainly if you've not got any sort of tank pads, but the tank of this is more conventional. You can tuck your leg under it. It's still 14 litres, but it gives them more of a, a sport, definitely more of a sports bike feel with the tank shape. And I do like the tank shape on this. And with this Velocity Moto kit, this is why it only really fits the XSR because of the fuel tank on the MT is completely different. So this body kit only fits the XSR. So before you're asking if you can fit this kit to your MT-09, you can't. It's XSR only, I'm afraid. So riding the bike, I feel like I am back in the 80s. <laughs> that colour scheme on the tank with this, you know, the red, the white and the black striping, it is just so 80s Yamaha. You know, that cowl, of course the kit is a fiberglass kit, so it's not an ABS plastic kit. This is all fiberglass. So you can see a little, you know, you can see the fiberglass weave on the inside. So it does have a little bit of a sort of aftermarket feel to the kicks. You can sort of see around the headlight bezel and, you know, it, it's fiberglass. And which means it's sort of very thin. You don't have that nice sort of rounded edges, you know, to the fairing and stuff like that. The kit costs £1,800, so it's not particularly cheap, but that includes the full fairing, you know, any of the decal kit, it's unpainted, of course, all of the bracketry to mount it, you know, for the tail, even, you know, even includes, like, the tail tidy, where all the indicators mount to. So it's a complete kit, but it is 1800 quid, unpainted. You know, if you want it painted, there's some various choices. You can have all of the classic Yamaha paint schemes, you know, like the Marlboro, you know, all, all of those iconic 500 paint schemes, the Kenny Roberts, oh, imagine this kit in the yellow, Kenny Roberts. Oh, it would look amazing, wouldn't it? So all that is an option. They're actually painted by Dream Machine. This one isn't. This one's been painted by Velocity Moto because it had to be put together quite quickly, this one. So the paint finish on this bike isn't quite as good as the Dream Machine paint finish. But if you want to know a few more details about the pricing and everything, 
I'll put a link to Velocity Moto in the description of the video, so click on there, all the details are there. But this kit only fits the 2022 and onwards XSR, so only in the latest XSR. I don't think it fits the previous gen. Velocity Moto also do an RD350 kit for the previous XSR, so you can have an RD350 looking kit, and they also do a kit for the MT-07, which is sort of an RD350 kit as well, and I've actually ridden all of these versions from Velocity Moto, so I'll link to those videos at the top. So if you want to see what I think to all of the Velocity Moto bikes, I've, got, I've ridden all of them now with this one. So there she is, the XP XS 900F. <laughs> I love that. XPXS. Rather than YPVS on the old 500, XPXS 900F. I mean, it looks incredible, doesn't it? I mean, there's more than a passing resemblance to the old RD500. That front cowl is just RD500. I think they've had to do a little bit of modification to the side panels and belly pan to make it all fit uh, the XSI you know, around the engine properly. But it's incredible, isn't it? And this the XSR tank just lends itself brilliantly to the lines of the RD. And I love the little vents here, the you know, little in inlet vents here into the tank. Oh, lovely. The rear tailpiece. And even around the back, you know, you've still got that sort of fat. It, it had two little pipes sticking out the back of the RD. But even like the rear end and the tail light, Looks really good on this, and all, on all of like the plate hanger, all this is included as part of the kit, so you get all of that, including the seat cow, which looks amazing. I'm not sure with the seat, I think the seat was also part of the kit as well. I think this whole seat unit comes with part of the kit, but go on their website and just double check this because I don't have all of the details. But I mean, as you can see, it looks amazing, doesn't it? What I don't like quite so much on the XSR compared to the MT-9 SP is everything's very black on the XSR. I mean, all the, because on the MT-09, the frame was like a gun metal. Now these were different color, that was silver. It just looks a little bit black, and I think it looks a little bit cheaper. It looks a little bit of a cheaper finish in the black. You know, we had the blue wheels, of course, on the SP, and I don't know, I, I just don't like everything being black as much as I did on the... On the I think the MT-09 looks better quality with a bit more colour to it. I don't know, it just looks a little bit, a little bit cheaper with just everything black to me. All of the bracketry here comes with part of the kit as well, and obviously the headlight, the headlight is actually the standard headlight. Obviously the X XSR has a round headlight and this just has the round headlight like sat within a fake sort of square cowl. And it actually sort of works. You don't really realize that that's a round headlight in there and not a square headlight. The reason for that, the original one actually had a proper, a proper square headlight in there. But because this kit is sold globally, it becomes a pain with different markets, you know, left and right sides of the road. Getting it sort of approved for the road then becomes a problem as well. You're into a lot more, a lot more difficulties. Whereas with a kit like that, it's the same wherever it's sold to. So that's the reason for that. If I was to do it, I'd probably find a way to mount in there a square light, and maybe do like a square. Hey, maybe the katana light might go in there. That katana light's a square light, isn't it? Maybe you could fit that in there. <laughs> I've got plans, the brain is whirring already about what I'd do to one of these. As I say, this one's still got the high bars, but there's no problem with steering lock. I mean, it all just about works and doesn't touch anything, you know, even with the high bars. So a flatter bar would be a lot, would fit much easier and there wouldn't be a problem with any clearance issues. Maybe some bar end mirrors as well. Might just finish it off with your flat bars. But yeah, I think this kit looks amazing. You know, first glance, or if you see it, riding past you think oh rd500 I mean, I mean look at that sat there i mean how how good does that look sat there like that wow absolutely beautiful absolutely love it so chucking it through a set of twisties as i say that two centimeter longer swinging arm definitely makes a difference to the handling but it feels a little bit more conventional more wet over the front you can sort of hang off it a little bit with this sort of tank setup the brakes still feel pretty decent they're a little bit wooden you know they're rubber lines you know they're typical japanese brake setup funnily enough the xsr has a brembo radial master cylinder but the mt09 has a nissan radial master cylinder so i don't know why the xsr gets a brembo and the uh, mt09 sp gets a nissan but 
The brakes feel very similar. You know, they're, they're fine. They are fine. They're just not outstanding. But a set of braided lines, change the pads maybe, and you'll have some really lovely brakes on this. The suspension is a little bit more bouncy than the SP, and when you go on the front, you know, there's, there's a bit more fork dive, and it sort of springs up quite quickly. It's fully adjustable, so I could have a play around with the twiddlies, but it's a bit like the MT-09, you know, you're better off just giving it a tickle on the rear brake going into the corners to settle it down. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. And the quick shifter blipper on this bike, I don't know whether it's the it's got a really nice slipper clutch as well, but when you blip down through the box and up and up on the quick shifter, it is sublime. The quick shifter blipper on this, and they're going down on the on the blipper as you're coming in to approach a corner. Oh, it feels so racy. You know, it's incredible the quick shifter blipper on this. Really makes it really adds to the engagement factor. A higher speed, you know. It, with that additional weight over the front, it's definitely a little bit nicer as the speed increases. It's also brilliant having a bit of fairing as well. You know, it's, it's a much easier bike to ride at speed with that fairing. The MT-09 with that seating position where you're sort of so upright and without any fairing, it, you do act as a bit of a sail and you feel like you're sort of getting pulled off the back of the bike. You can sort of hunker down at the front a little bit on this and get behind that fairing. <laughs> Oh, I'm reliving my 80s dreams. I'm now Wayne Rainey. <laughs> this is that blipper. It's so nice on that blipper. Let's give it a little bit of a spin up the hill climb. Tickle on the rear so you can lock your leg a little bit. Let's try and hang off. Yeah, it's much nicer to hang off of. Much more conventional, even though it's still got the really high bars. If you were to put a set of clip-ons on this, oh, it'd be amazing with a set of clip-ons or just some flat bars, maybe. That would, that's what I'd do if I had one of these. But because of that tank shape, you can get out of the seat, you can hang off. The seat isn't as wide. The seat is actually much narrower, narrower on the uh, XSR. The M209 seat is very wide. This is more sort of conventional. It's, it's not as comfortable, I wouldn't say, as the MT-09 because it's not as wide. But it's easy to move around to get hang off the seat, get your leg off, lock your legs under the tank. So, yeah, this, this is definitely better, I'd say, on faster corners, faster roads, where the MT-09 excels at the really tight, twisty stuff. I mean, it, it, I'd say the MT-09 is almost as agile and flickable as my 690 SMCR. You can ride those similar little B roads and yeah, it's, it's really, really fun. I would say this isn't quite as much fun as the MT-09, but it's still incredible and still perhaps the best retro bike money can buy. And that's before you make it look like an RD500. You make it look like an RD500 and take my money. It's incredible. Let's, let's do a fourth gear roll on it. Fourth gear, at 2,000 revs in fourth gear at 28 miles an hour. <laughs> 60. That's fourth gear at 2,000 revs. There's so much low down grunt on this bike. On the electronics front, it's got absolutely everything, just like the MT-09 SP. Slide control, wheelie control that you can separate from traction control so this bike has got the wheelie control turned off but the traction control on it's also got adjustable slide control and the and the traction control's got three levels of adjustment to it as well so it's not just on or off there's three levels of traction control it's got the cruise control from the mt9 sp so it's actually the same switch gear as the mt10 it's also got the brake control adjustable engine braking as well so i mean it's incredible that they've packed all these electronics onto a middleweight bike yes this is 900 cc but it's still a middleweight because of the power figures it's 117 horsepower that's middleweight power so that's why it's a middleweight i know it's almost a litre bike but it's still a middleweight faster corner this is where that setup will help get off the bike hang off there <laughs> oh, camera, don't you dare fall off. 
Okay, let's give a little bit of a tickle as we did with the MT-09. The front is still going to be very lively, but not quite as lively as the MT, I don't think. As you can see, I mean, there was no wheel lift at all. I actually thought maybe the XSR, the gearing had been adjusted and it was a bit taller geared because the front is so much more locked to the road. But it's not. The gearing, from what I can see, the gearing is identical. So that must just be down to that two inches longer swinging arm. The, the front is more locked. And it's a shame because that was one of my favorite things for the MT-09 was how playful it was with the front wheel coming up and how easy it was just to clutch up and wheelie. It has lost a bit of that, which I think is a real shame, which is, which is why I'd want to do the conversion to an MT-09 and not the XSR, just because I'm a hooligan, that's all. 70 miles an hour, because you've got that fairing, I'm not getting pushed off the back of the bike. I've got sort of air hitting my helmet, but you know, it's a really high screen, you've got a nice fair in there. You know, it's really comfortable. It'll be really comfortable on the motorway. And it's still sort of doing about four and a half thousand revs at 70 foot, but just over 4,000 revs at 70. Absolutely cruising. And the vibrations, there's hardly any vibes through the bars. There's nothing through the seat. Tiny, tiny amount through the foot pegs. You know, it's, it's a really well balanced engine, this. So there we go, the XSR 900, an incredibly good motorcycle. And if I hadn't ridden the MT-09 SP, I think it could be one of my favorite middleweights. But I just think the MT-09 SP is a little bit sharper. I mean, it is about another thousand pound more expensive. It is a fair bit more money, the MT-09 SP. So you could spend extra on the suspension on this, blah, blah, blah. You, know, you could bring it up to the level of the MT-09 SP, I guess. But I think the fact that that's got the shorter swinging arm, for me, that just brings a lot more fun. But this XSR 900 is absolutely fantastic. And with this Velocity Moto body kit on, oh, I think it's my, it's my favorite styled retro bike to date. It's absolutely incredible. And it, and it just feels so special to ride it. And it brings you all of the look of the old 500. Okay, it's not a two stroke. It's not a four pot two stroke, obviously, but you can't argue with the looks of it. You can't argue with that sort of retro pedigree as well. Absolutely love it. So don't forget, if you want to know more details, full pricing information, I'll put links to Velocity Moto in the description. Go and look at their website and uh, see what you think. I am blown away. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.